Hold up. Uh, this is uh, former President Nixon in hell. It's okay. It's okay. It's not so bad down here. It's, it's really not so bad down here in hell. It's really a lot like one of those Bohemian Grove things I used to attend. Ladies and gentlemen, you are watching Austin's beloved Perry Logan in The Last Republican. Hello, uh, this is uh, former President Nixon in hell. It's okay, it's okay, it's not so bad down here. It's, it's really not so bad down here in hell. It's really a lot like one of those Bohemian Grove things I used to attend. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you are watching Austin's beloved Perry Logan in The Last Republican. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, this is uh, Richard Nixon. I am not a crook. Even though I'm in hell, I am not a crook. Even though every Republican goes to hell, even though every bloody Republican gets reborn as a bloody lab animal, every bloody Republican who has blood on his hands gets reborn as a bloody goddamn <laughs> lab animal. Uh, just a moment, I have to scream in pain. Hello, and welcome to the cell where we keep bubbles and keep the last Republican. We keep him here all by himself. We keep him here all by himself because, you see, we're afraid it might be contagious. We're afraid all that crackpot right-wing spit, we are afraid all that crackpot right-wing spit might be contagious. It might spread. It might spread. We have yet to find out if we can even survive. George W. Bush, we may not even survive. George W. Celebrating the dying cry of the last Republican! The dying cry of the last Republican! The dying cry of the last Republican! <laughs> and now, Austin's beloved Perry Logan sings the dying cry of the last Republican. Hear the dying cry of the last Republican. I hear the dying cry of the last Republican. And the whole world joins in a jubilation. All the whole world joins in jubilation at the dying cry of the last Republican. <laughs> oh, it is kind of pathetic, isn't it? Hi. Hey, it's December 18th, 2008. 
and it's beginning to look like Christmas. It's beginning to look and feel like Christmas as the world's hopes come true and the terrible, awful, criminal, dying Republicans are like, just like, wiped, wiped, wiped from the face of the earth. earth. It's almost as if those evil neocons, the giga, neocons had never happened. Now all we hear are their pathetic, dying cries. Ooh, that is pathetic. That's kind of a mewing, mewling, puling, self-pitying, loser whining of the dead Republicans are loser. Ha! For people who are dead, they're making a lot of noise. Eh. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a symbolic three-dimensional representation of what Perry just said. Can you hear the sound of the dead? Republican Party of the Dead and Gone. Republican Party of the Dead and oh, not so lamented. Republican Party as they pew and mew and whine. Welcome to This Is Your Life, Last Republican. Last Republican. Born to the second to last Republicans. Born kicking and screaming with a love of catastrophic policies and crooked leaders. The last Republican is Bubbles McGee. Born July 24th, 1947, schooled at Wayne State University and the University of Southern California. Bubbles McGee became the primary economic theorist for the now dead Republican Party. As the now defunct Republican Party. And let me hear you say, defunct Republican Party. And let me hear you say, now defunct Republican Party. And let me hear you say, now defunct Republican Party. And now, Perry Logan, the zookeeper of the last Republican Zoo. Hi. Hi, I'm the zookeeper of the last Republican Zoo. We've got to keep it quiet down here. I'll just use this, okay? My friends, I am the zookeeper here in the last Republican zoo <laughs> where nobody ever comes. Where Bubbles McGee, the last Republican. The last Republican is an economist named Bubbles McGee. Okay. 
kids, come on, be kind. This is the last Republican. Don't you remember? They got totally humiliated in the last two national elections. <laughs> they did. They got totally humiliated in the last two presidential elections. Bubbles McGee. The Republican economists, now the last Republican, they just all up and die. Hey, allow me my fantasy, baby. Hey, allow me the fantasy in which the Republicans just up and die. Hey. Want to have some fun here on December 19th, 2008? Join me in a fun fantasy. Just imagine that there's only one Republican left. His name is Bubbles McGee. He's the one who, who started all those bloody economic bubbles, which are the Republicans' idea of economic genius. And now back to, now back to our zookeeper, Perry Logan. Were the Republicans lying when they said Obama was a socialist? <laughs> or merely really confused? Well, who cares? Hey, there ain't but one lab. That that's the whole premise of the show. The whole bloody premise of the show is that there's only uh, there ain't but one Republican left. His name is Bubbles McGee. No, no, no. It, this is the premise of the show. There ain't but one Republican left. Not but one Republican left. His name is Bubbles McGee. Bubbles McGee, the last Republican. Ah, oh, here's a man who has had his guts ripped out almost literally. Let's put it this way. Here's a man who has had his guts almost Freaky, freaky. Here is a man who watched his party virtually kill itself, virtually destroy itself. That's the thing that makes it so tough. Or Bubbles McGee. Well, there was no external enemy or uh, there was no like concerted force that was going to bring them down. In fact, you know, even though I, I like to apologize, I like to kind of promote the democratic thing and defend the Democrats, right? Because you see, the people who attack Democrats are the scum of the earth. <laughs> the people who attack Democrats are the scum of the earth. They shall die in every one of the country, skin the laws, eating, killing the stars, and fighting at the start, at the start, the start, the start, the start. This is of ex-president Richard Nixon uh, down in hell. Uh, this is ex-president Richard Nixon down in the first circle of hell. Uh, but, uh, but, but it's okay. Uh, it's not. It's okay. It's not really that different from one of those Bohemian Grove things where all those disgusting right-wing perverts used together. I knew that my party was going to hell, and I was going to lead it there. Ladies and gentlemen, all this is our Richard I am not a crook, even though I'm in hell. I am not a crook, even though every Republican goes to hell. Even though every bloody Republican gets reborn as a bloody lab animal. Every bloody Republican who has blood on his hands gets reborn as a bloody goddamn <laughs> lab animal. Uh, just a moment, I have to scream in pain. Uh, this is Richard Nixon down in hell. One moment, I have to scream in pain. Well, I'm in hell, after all. You, my friend, look very upset and confused. I'm not a good 
my friend you look very upset and confused. So we are going to review the show so far. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. There follows a slide show of the show so far. Space is infinite. It is dark. Space is neutral. It is cold. Stars occupy minute areas of space. They are clustered a few billion here and a few billion there as if seeking consolation in numbers. Space does not care. Space does not threaten. Space does not comfort. It does not sleep. It does not wake. It does not dream. It does not hope. It does not fear. It does not love. It does not hate does not encourage any of these qualities. That was the show so far. I think it clarifies everything. Uh, please prepare for a quiz. There will not be a quiz on uh, the show so far. Now back to uh, America, and America, and now back to uh, Perry Logan in The Last Republic. Is that a sound? Oh, I had a dream. I had a dream in which the tormented spirit of Richard Milhouse Nixon went ah! expressed his dismay that he had helped drive the Republicans to extinction. And I think dismay is good in Republicans. Right? All right, all right, we are going to meet Bubbles. <laughs> Former economist for the Republican Party, now the only one left. Meanwhile, back in reality, as Obama picks his decidedly non-socialist cabinet... <laughs> no, were the Republicans lying? When they said Obama was a socialist? Did they forget? <laughs> oh well, anyway, uh, as Obama picks his cabinet, what do you think the Republicans are doing? <laughs> Obsessing about birth certificates? You know this story. They are obsessing about the Blag Blaganovich, Blagojevich, the corrupt governor. They are obsessing about Obama's possible connections and whatever. In other words, you would think we had no problems. Hey, think about this. You would think. Oh, here, watch this. Hi. You would think we had no problems, you see, of significance. You would think. We weren't trying to bail our poor little butts out of the upcoming Second Great Depression that all that bad deregulation caused. Yeah. Well, don't you see, uh, according to the Republicans, the economy should be booming right now. You see how things fall out of their mind? Now look, things fall out of the Republican mind. Things fall out of the Republican mind. They seem to have forgotten that they were saying over and over again that Obama is a socialist. Okay, well we know he's not. We're pretty sure he's not except for the real, real lunar right. Only the really dangerously insane lunar right at this point thinks Obama's still a socialist. But you see, it proves they were either lying or very confused. Bubbles McGee, man of mystery. Bubbles McGee, what makes him tick? How is it that he voted twice for the worst goddamn president ever? How 
is it that he could let our troops go without body armor? How could he let our wounded vets lie around in their own urine? How could he allow their president to accumulate more debt than all previous presidents combined? How could he allow the Senate to disband the Senate ethics committee? How does he survive having had his guts almost literally ripped out in the last two elections? Well, we don't know. We don't know if he will even show up. Keep in mind, this is a man at death's door, a man who has lost everything, a man who has watched his party systematically deconstruct itself, shoot itself in the foot, so to speak. Many times. Well, and here, uh, okay, what I'm trying to tell you is that I want you to be gentle with this man. I'm going to bring him out. Be gentle with this man. You see, this poor man, the last Republican, has had his guts ripped out. He has had his guts ripped out. Repeat after me. He has had his guts ripped out. He has had his guts ripped out. Right, Perry? Right. He has had his guts ripped out. Right, Perry? I guess so. This seems to be corroborated. But I want you to understand the guy has had his guts ripped out with two electoral defeats. In case you don't know, the Republicans not only lost on the national level in the last two elections, but they were decimated at the state level. Hallelujah! The, the Republicans were decimated at the state level. Hallelujah! Uh, give me a uh, hallelujah! Oh! None of this is going to help all of this. Okay. I'm trying to introduce... Uh, we are about to trot out Bubbles McGee. The last Republican. That would be him. Okay, that would be him. Making a kind of a whining, puling, weeping, self-pitying loser sound. But you gotta understand, this man has had his guts ripped out. He got to watch it. I'm very worked up here. He got to watch his party commit suicide by its own hand. Oh no! Poor Bubbles. He can barely talk. He just makes that sound. See? He got to watch his own party. He got to watch his party commit suicide by its own hand. He got to watch his own party. His own party. Commit suicide! Commit suicide by its own hand. That's gotta hurt! Ow. That's gotta hurt! Okay, so... Try to be sensitive as we introduce the last Republican, Bubbles McGee. Ladies and gentlemen, the Perry Logan Choir sings a song in honor of the last Republican. Is
strip of the king. Look at the last whining Republican in the world. Tell us, Bubbles, how does it feel to be the laughing stock of the universe? How does it feel to have your guts all squarely ripped out by so many successive electoral defeats that all your policies fail and everything you ever believed proved wrong? How does it feel? Little guy, how does it feel? A little guy, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was Bubbles who said, let's start a housing bubble. It was Bubbles who said, let's deregulate everything. It was Bubbles McGee, Republican economist extraordinaire, who said, let's give tax breaks for the rich and see what happens. And now the Perry Logan Mime Troop mimes the Republicans totaling the economy. Oh, cool. Yeah. <laughs>